Morning to you. It's Sunday, the 27th of August, 2017. Welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom. So I've just got to say a quick hello to someone who is very, very rarely with us. Good morning to Ryan Appleby, DJ extraordinaire. How are you, Ryan? Who says it's a rare visit from me, Chris. Hope all is well. Can I have a shout out, please? Of course you can have a shout out, Ryan. Now, Ryan is big time club DJ up to north somewhere, up to north. And years ago, when I was big time club DJ in London and the South East, when I used to do that, um, uh, Ryan was just starting. And I'll never forget a couple of times he sent me a, letter, a couple of messages saying, I'm thinking of giving up. I'm not getting anywhere. And I told him to carry on. And he got there. I told you, didn't I? My God, you must have about 10 houses by now, Ryan, haven't you? What you want now? £1,000 a night? Something like that? <laughs> Round about that? I'm just a rough guess. You know, just a rough guess. Well, it's lovely to have you with us, Ryan, uh, this morning, all right? And the other early people so far? Uh, Diane's there. Good morning, lovely Diane. First in with a message this morning. Morning, Diane. Paul McIlroy's there from Flex FM. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Flex FM. I don't think you had jingles like that, did you? When you were doing Flex FM. Yes. Morning, Mark. Getting ready to see us later in Camden. Yeah, we got a, a long all night karaoke. Well, not all, well, it's all night to me. It's kind of all night to me. Uh, all night karaoke tonight, starting at eight o'clock and finishing at two in the morning. That's at uh, the Camden Eye in Camden Town. That's tonight. This Sunday usually finishes at 11 o'clock. Bank College is tonight. We're going through until two in the morning. Now, I'm not used now to work until two in the morning. My latest is 12 o'clock. So has anyone got any suggestions on how to keep me wide awake, boys and girls? Maybe you could send a man to stand with me in the DJ box and touch me every now and again, just to keep me on my, you know, if I sort of, you could sort of touch me a little bit. Touch me somewhere, and uh, that would keep me wide awake. I like in the sound of that. That footballer that, that was sold for millions and millions of pounds. Here, do send him over today if he's not playing a match somewhere. All right, Mark, you know all the footballers, don't you? You'll be able to sort that out, surely. <laughs> Morning, Shania. Uh, pigeons in the back were not quite, not quite. I'm so glad you've noticed that, Paul. At last, someone's mentioned the parrots. I put them up yesterday. I thought, oh, people are going to like that. Not a thing. No one mentioned the parrot. So thank you very much. We have pigeons in the background disguised as parrots this morning. Do you like it? It was only about 15 quid. I get all these pictures from the range, except for the um, for the old Thames one, which uh, my brother-in-law, he, he doesn't do it anymore. He used to make those pictures, you know, where you've got the wooden frame and they put, I don't know what that stuff is, some sort of cotton material, I think, in a machine, and it prints a picture on All very clever, but he doesn't do it anymore. I think it cost him, probably cost him more to run than it, uh, uh, than he was making money. Very, very complicated. Great big blooming uh, uh, printer thing they used to have in the, um, in the living room there. Ryan says, yes, and never forget the early days. Never, ever forget the early days, Ryan. Would you like me to tell you about my, one of my first discos ever? I remember, yes, let me try. I'm trying to think now. Yes, I've got it. I've got it. It's in my head now. So my first disco ever, okay, was in a pub called The High Woman, which is in Roehampton. I don't even know if it's still there anymore. Um, and it was The High Woman. And I said I wanted to do discos. And she said, well, why don't you come and do one here? So I said, OK, then I had I had Paul, no equipment, Ryan. I had no equipment at all. OK, um, I turned up there with two. Do you remember the old record players with the lid and it had an automatic drop down thing? So you, you, you put on a pile of records at the top, like five or six records. Have I got any records here? There might be people watching the show who don't know what a bloody record looks like now. Hang on a minute. Have I got any here? Oh, there's one. What's this here? Man on the moon. Look at this. This is a. Um, a recording I've I've kept as a child, man's first steps on the moon, and I don't I think it came free in a newspaper or something like that. Anyway, here it is. Look look at this, man's first steps on the moon, and it shows you a picture of the moon, and it came with a record of the recordings and what they said to each other from Mission Control. That is a record. There we go, record on a little record. Okay, so these record players that my mum had 
you could loan, uh, sorry, you could put five or six records on this spindle that sat in the middle, one, two, three, four, five, and automatically they would, one, well, when one was finished, it would drop down and the next one would play. This arm would come up, go down and go like that, all automatic. Sometimes the arm wasn't adjusted properly, so it would miss the side of the record and land off the record or too far in and there would be a screw that you would have to, had to adjust this with. Anyway, to turn up, so I turned up at um, at the High Woman with two of these record players, literally two, and a suitcase full of records. And I sat up on a table on kind of a, a like a makeshift stage, uh, these two record players, my box of records, and I literally just put on one record after another. That was it. And that's all I did. That was my first ever disco out, I think. I'm sure that was the first one. Yes, that was my first ever one. Isn't it amazing what we can do now with all this stuff? You can sit in a bedroom and DJ in a club if you want to. That is technically possible. I don't know if anyone does it anywhere. You could literally do the work from your own house, but I bet the clubs wouldn't pay you what pay you your, your two thousand pounds a gig what you get now, Ryan. I hope that's all being declared, dear. <laughs> Oh, dear. Ryan says, uh, you, um, lots of Red Bull, lots, not Red Bull, lots of cover. I don't drink Red Bull. Oh, that is disgusting, that stuff. I used to, oh, Christ, when it first came out, I did drink Red Bull. And I noticed very quickly that the next morning your teeth would be screaming at you. I don't know if it stripped the enamel off the teeth or something, but they were really bad. And that's after after brushing my teeth. I always brush my teeth before I go to bed at night. I hope you do as well. And flossing. <laughs> oh, talking about flossing. So Friday, when we was in the swimming pool, the showers broke down. There were no showers. I mean, I was still in a pool going up and down like that. And my mate was in there. He'd left early because he had a, a hospital appointment. And he came back in. He, he came back in. So he's got. He's left the swimming pool, gone into the shower. Well, he's come back through with a little towel wrapped around his rather large waist, and was waddling over to the um, uh, door where you go through to the reception. And I noticed he had soap all over his face. I said, "What's up?" He said, "The showers aren't working." And then someone came out, the ladies. I said, "Are the showers working?" She said, "No." Anyway, so they went in, and there was a problem with the showers. I don't know what they turned the water. Off. Of course, they do these things, don't they? They turn the water off, and they don't tell anyone. And this isn't the water board. The maintenance man in the hotel. Wouldn't you think they would come down and say, oh, very sorry about that. You know, the showers are going to be out of order from 11.30 to 12 o'clock, whatever. You would think that they do that. No, no one told us. So the poor girl behind the counter, she has, you know, she's only been there a few weeks, is running around like a blue-arsed fly trying to find out what the hell's going on. Meanwhile, my mate's standing there with the soap and he's not the patient, it's the person. He likes to complain. My God, does he complain. I'm telling you now, if you're, if you're a workman, never, ever do a job for my mate because he will find something wrong with it. He will... Oh, 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 look at this remote. Oh, 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 there's a tiny black mark on that. Can you see that? You haven't cleaned that properly. There's, there's a, can you see that tiny black mark there? Yeah, that, that hasn't been cleaned properly. That's how he is. Never, ever, if you're a tradesmen, do not go and do a job for my mate Ronnie. You will never hear the end of it. Anyway, so he's standing there. Um, eventually, I think that they, uh, get, they opened two of the hotel rooms because the swimming pool I go to is in the Hilton Hotel, just up the road there. Don't think that's posh. Hilton is like an upmarket vert. I mean, it's on the same sort of level in my eyes as Premier Inn. There's nothing wrong with those Premier Inn or those travel lodges. Same sort of thing, but it's got the Hilton name. But it's not like the Hilton in London. You know, we're not talking five star. It's a basic hotel. It's all right. I would recommend it, yes. But it's nothing special. There's not ornate candelabras and things like and a, a grand piano in the corner. Nothing like that. Um, so they've opened two rooms. So he's gone up and come back down there. Um, uh, at his shower and then off off he went to his appointment and other people, so I've got out of the pool now and I said, are the showers working yet? She says, no. She says, um, uh, you can use one of the rooms but they're both full at the moment. I said, there's two men up there. I said, well, let's go quickly. Give me the key, woman. 
What are they like? Is there a picture of the two men that are in the rooms? No, unfortunately not. So I sat there in my tiny little tower around my ever decreasing waist, boys and girls. I sat there on my mobile phone and they, honestly, these blokes were about 15 minutes in that room. Oh dear, you know, one in each, not two in one. We're not having any of that funny business, not in a hotel, dear. Two men sharing a room? Where will it all come to, dear? They'll be holding hands in the street next. Two men sharing a room? Never been heard of. In Bracknell? I don't think so, dear. You might get that in North London, where they're all loony lefty accept everyone. Oh, we're not having that sort of thing going on here in Bracknell. It's disgusting, dear. Anyway, so eventually one of them comes down from one of the rooms. So she says, oh, there you go, and gives me the key. So I go, thank you very much. Is there any shampoo in the room? She says, oh, oh, I don't know. And the bloke then said, oh, no, there isn't. But there's a woman outside with a trolley who will give you some. And I thought, oh, knowing my luck, by the time I get up there, she would have moved on to some other rooms. Anyway, uh, so I had to go through. The, this is with a, all I've got is a towel wrapped around my little naked bum. That's all I've got. And I'm walking through this hotel, through the corridors. Wet feet on their new, oh, lovely new carpet they've got. Ever so thick. Oh, it was lovely walking on that carpet. So I'm walking there. I've got to go up a flight of stairs, turn right, turn right again, and it's room 218. Which, funnily enough, I think that was my, my room at school. Was No, that was 211, room 211 at school. No, so room 218 and 219. So I've gone in there. Uh, of course, the bloke before me, uh, uh, there's there's little shampoo things left on the... And I thought, oh, there's no shampoo in here. Gone outside, the woman's still out there. Can I have some shampoo? Of course, she can't speak a word of English, can she? You know, okay. I said, can I have some shampoo? Okay. You know, shampoo, dear, shampoo. Uh, 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 uh. Ah! She get, and she points... She points on the thing. So, well, if you're going to point, I'll have half a dozen of the things, you know. So I picked up this rather nice looking orange one. Tangerine or whatever flavour it was. Anyway, so I went back in there. There's there's a dirty towel on the floor with that bloke. You know, I mean, you would have thought he would have moved that, wouldn't you? The cleaners haven't got time to go in and out after everyone from the swimming pool going up to use this blooming shower. So I've, I've kind of stepped, kicked it into the corner and put my own one down. I've got two towels now. So I put that on the floor. Turn the shower on. I, I removed little shower gel bottles and placed them in the bin. Dirty people. So I've turned the shower on to warm it up. I've gone to the sink. So I'm starting to have my shave. And then I've put my, my, my uh, shaving blade thing down. Uh, which, incidentally, I got from Audi. Shaving blades and shaving stuff, go to Audi. It's dirt cheap. No more of this being ripped off by Wilkinson or Gillette. Why is it £15 for a packet of razors? I don't think so. Audi do, like, I think they're five blades in a little thing and they're about three quid for five. So go to Audi for those, OK? So I'm having my shave. I put this down and they're, and they're dirty bastards. And there, on the sink, is... A piece of floss. A piece of floss has been left on the sink. How disgusting people are. Now, I don't know if it was the bloke before me or it was the, the people that had stayed in the room because the bed hadn't been made either. You know. Oh, dirty. How can you leave a piece of floss on the stink? Disgusting people. They really are. Dirty. So I, I got a piece of toilet paper and I removed it and placed that in the bin. Then I had my shower, opened my little orange thing. Oh, don't I smell nice. It wasn't quite an orange flavour, more like a tangerine satsuma flavour. So I had all that over me and had my shower and then went, went back downstairs and that was all sorted. But honestly, the way they were to, oh my God, oh, there's no showers working and no, no shower. You know, there's starving people. There's people in Texas being flooded out. People dead on a coach crash and they're moaning that the showers aren't working. Oh, for God's sake, man. You know, it's it's a bit of an inconvenience, but what's, what's that added on to my day to the swimming pool? About five minutes, that's all. So that, <laughs> that's my shower thing. I don't, I don't know how we got into the subject of that. I was talking about flossing or something, weren't we? What was I talking about before we got onto that? Let's read some of your messages there. Um, 
let's have a look. Uh, Paul McIlroy, Coke. No, I don't do Coca-Cola, Paul. We don't do anything like that, thank you, Paul. Coke. We don't do... I've never done that, believe it or not. Never, ever done anything like that. Oh, the thought of putting something up my nose. No, thank you very much. Um, Jason Alexander. Good morning, Jason. Said, seen them pictures in the pound shop, dear. What, these ones? You won't get one of those for a pound. Not in this game. You get nothing for a pound. Oh, Brucey. Brucey Forsyth. We miss him. There was a lovely story, actually, this morning. Um on the BBC website, and, and it's about Bruce Forsyth dying. Uh, but it's a, it's a lovely story. Can I just read this to you from the BBC website this morning? Uh, so Bruce, Bruce Forsyth dialed quietly and peacefully with his family at his side, his widow has said, speaking publicly for the first time since his death. Lady Wilnelia. Is it Wilnelia? Wilnelia, who was married to him for 34 years, said she nursed him for the final two weeks of his life. Uh, he was 89 when he died just over a week ago after a long-term illness. We don't we don't know what the long-term illness is yet, do we? We were all very suspicious when he um, dumped the Strictly uh, uh, Strictly Come Dancing program uh, a couple of Christmases ago. And we never heard from him after that. Not a peep. Wasn't anything, was there? Uh, Lady in Wood will. Will Nelia said his passing had left a very big hole in her life. Well, it would do, wouldn't it? You know, you imagine being married to someone for that long. It's like it, it's like losing a limb. It really would be or two limbs or two limbs and two legs. <laughs> you know, it must be, though, mustn't it? And um, I mean, I'm on my own. I've, I've never been with anyone for more than... <laughs> I think the longest is about two years. And the longest I've been with someone is about two years. And that, that's not a joke. And I don't suppose I will ever feel that terrible loss that one must suffer if you're with someone for so long. Like my mother and father were married. Uh, they got married in their teens. I think it was in their teens. Not exactly sure of the date, but I'm sure it was it was very, very old. And they re remained with each other all that time. And then when my father died, my mum couldn't cope after that. And my mother was never ill, never ill. My father died and she had a lot of illness after that. A lot of illness. And you do hear that. You do hear that if you're with someone for so long when... When one goes, it just must be awful. And I, you know, in a way, being on your own, you're kind of buffered from that. You're, you know, to actually find someone, find someone that is your soul mate. That must be wonderful. I mean, you see a lot of the celebrities and all that on the telly. Uh, people like, uh, like, like Jordan and that Kieran. You know, they go out together. You know, they, they're with each other, kind of almost just for the publicity. It, it come, Oh, that's at least how it comes across. Oh, but I really love him. No, you don't, darling. You're with him for the publicity. And there's a lot of that in, I think, the celebrity world. When you see these people on The Only Way as Essex and Big Brother getting together. No, they, they don't actually love each other. It's just a quick one in the back seat. That's all it is. And then they get married. They don't even know each other. I think if you're on your own, you are actually at an advantage in that not missing someone when they go. However, you're a big disadvantage because you never found your soulmate, you see. For someone to find their soulmate and then be with them for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Look at the Queen. She's just coming up to a big anniversary, isn't she? Is it 75 years she's been with him? Oh, dear, that would do my head in. <laughs> you know, so, of course, that's their advantage over someone being on their own. To have someone like that in your life that you can 100% depend on each other. They will do anything for each other. 
I mean, I just think that's that 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 really is a wonderful thing to to manage uh, to actually be like that. That must be fantastic to be like that. But if you're on your own, of course, you're. You, I mean, you will miss out, of course, on being with someone for so long. But um, you're, you know, you won't have that terrible loss that you probably get when um, uh, when someone dies. OK, uh, let's go to the phones. Vectis is on the line from the Isle of Wight. Good morning, Vectis. Hello, Chris. Now we normally you phone up, we talk about happy things. Happy well, things, yes. <laughs> this, is, this could be a bit of a change. I was just flying about, cause, you know, the, the, the life of a of an international radio star, you know, sort of doing my washing Is, and yeah, uh, yeah, washing yeah, up yeah, yeah. all That's before you. I broadcast. That's you. Um, you, were, you were saying about your um, poor mum, how she's a healthy fit woman and yet was never the same after your dad died. Yes. You know, I was, I was listening to something on Radio 4, because you wasn't on at the time. If you were on, I would have been listening to that. Uh, thank you very much, Vectis. But, but do you know there is a, um, um, an opinion in medical science now that says you can actually die from a broken heart? I mean, I mean, I know if you have a heart attack, it's obviously a broken heart. But no, emotionally, evidently, a broken heart. It can, it can sometimes happen totally randomly if nothing's happened to you, but it can actually be brought on by real severe stress and shock, which obviously, um, if you lose someone, especially if it's in a very um, traumatic circumstance, yeah, evidently it's something... I, I, I couldn't quite work out by what they were t t saying on the radio, how emotional stress work, worked into an actual weakening of the heart muscle. But yeah, it was a, a pucker program on Radio 4, and I thought in a sort of perhaps a morbid sort of way, but I thought that's quite interesting. Cause it's, it's, um, it's a saying, isn't it? Oh, someone's died of a broken heart because their husband died a year ago and they pined away. But evidently there might be a sort of germ of uh, medical um, science in that expression. I thought it was quite interesting. Oh, I, t I totally agree with you. You know, I think my mother died from a broken heart. I, I've known, you know, it, when 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 people have been married for so long, and you often see this, so you must have seen it, Vectis, where one dies yeah. and three or four years later, the other one dies. Yeah. That, that's dying yeah, from got... a broken heart. I think, mm. um, I think a, a, a lot of stress and upset and that sort of thing can bring something on, you know. So although you might have died of, heart failure, uh, cancer, something like that. If you, you were ev never ill before that, then something must have brought that on. No, I mean, it's the power of the human mind, isn't it? We, yeah. don't, we don't understand sort of like Di the vast majority of the dying, pain, isn't it? I mean, dying from a broken heart. You know, the, the real worry for me is, Vectis, the real worry for me is, you know, here I sit doing my show. If I was to die in the next few minutes... How many of the people watching this show now would die from a broken heart? That's a worry to me. And I spent... It's a, it's a responsibility, Chris, isn't it? It's a terrible responsibility. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you, Chris, honestly. <laughs> I, are you enjoying my parrots this morning? Have you seen those before? I haven't, no. no. I can't no, remember but, but... if I'd put them on the wall or not before, really. Um... Uh, I well, think... they, all, they were on there when you were doing your tests yesterday, weren't they? Yes, were they, they were, there? yes, yes, when yeah. I was doing my test transmission. I was yeah, actually thinking of doing the um, uh, the show from the garden this morning because I found my um, my uh, tablet thing. You remember I was looking for my tablet yesterday? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I found that. Now, this was given to me by um, a, young, uh, a girl called Sharon who used to come into one of the places that I worked. And I find oh, yeah. it a bit slow, but it, it... Oh, hang on. Oh, it's playing something now. Hang on, it's playing my show. Why is it... Oh, hang on. No, hang on. Hang on, how do I get out of this? <laughs> As you can see, I'm not quite used to working it yet. <laughs> who, was, who was slow anyway, the tablet or Sharon? I don't understand. <laughs> the tablet. It is a oh, bit right. slow. Oh, sorry, I mean, it's, Sharon. <laughs> it's not, not an iPad or anything like that. It's a... Uh, a uh, Harui... Hi, woo wee. Oh, yeah, hi, wee. Right. There it is. Hi, wee. It's a hi, wee. I thought you were just about to cut your desk in off with your, with your hand and go, hi, <laughs> wee. Hi, <laughs> wee. <laughs> Did I just cut I you off then? I'll to you then. Ooh. Yeah, so I can, I can use my phone to do the broadcast from outside and keep an eye on the messages on this, you on see. Hi, wee. 
So I'm going to let, um, perhaps I can do that now. Let's have a look. So I have to find. There we are. Let's click that. If I. You want to be careful outside. Oh, hang on. Now, I'm, now I'm on. I'm watching no. myself now. How do I stop that? Oh, it keeps playing. Hang on. Maybe I can turn the volume. No, that's playing me now. I don't want it to play me, do I? Oh, no. Maybe I'll just turn I it down. I, I sometimes being... do that when I do a Facebook Live in the studio from Vectis Radio. It's most odd, because I do it on my phone. It's and very, I put very... it on one of the big screen monitors as well, and you can just catch out the corner of your eye. Yourself All right, yeah. It's not, it's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> now, now, I'm trying to scroll up and down these messages. That's not happening. Or maybe I can't yeah. use this. I don't know. What happens there? Hang on, if I turn it to the side. No, nope. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to work then. Oh, maybe I can't no. use that. Oh, that's yeah, a shame. Sure it would work on... I know it would... It Maybe because it's the blooming thing is so slow. I don't know. Uh, yeah. What if I was to find my page and go to that? Would that work? Let's have a look. It's all very technical for a Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit too... Especially first thing, you know, after church as well. I've just about got my head round the hymns. Oh, hang on, there we go. Oh, no, I've lost them again. One minute. Oh, oh yeah, minute. for a while. There we are. Look at that now. Um, ah, yeah, but the messages start with Barbie Leap, so I can't see the ones before that. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Oh, no, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, oh there yes, there go. we go. There we go. Now, so it says, where can I get to there? Terry H is with us. Good morning, Terry H. There you are. Look, I can see all the messages oh. now. Look, look at that. Look, oh. look. How I clever is that? Just, you just need two devices and you'll be all right. Yes. Vector says, pray for those untidy souls. What's an untidy yeah. soul? Someone who leaves dental floss and changing rooms. That's an untidy soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how disgusting is that? Uh, to find that terrible, piece of... What's... Have you ever been to a dirty hotel room? Have you ever had that? Um, or caravan? No, I've been, I've, I've been fairly lucky, really. I think, you know, when I go somewhere, I'm afraid a lot of people it tends to be sort of premier in or sort of one of those and right. you tend to find they're pretty generic aren't they with yes a pretty sort of generic sort of style of uh, hygiene as well they're already pretty good i think uh, they're i think they're very high standard those premier ends uh, i stated you know exactly what you're getting then it? it could be in yeah. scotland or down in the west country you know, well, apart from perhaps a slight different change in the size of the room you know exactly what the bed's going to be like what the bedroom cabinet's going to be like and it suits me the bath. I mean, there was enough room for my fat ass in that bath as well. I couldn't believe it. But I stayed at the one in Houston. That was in November when we went to um, uh, when we went to the very very expensive. U oh, I just found a bit of glass on there. Where's that coming? When I went to the very expensive Euro Disney, um, and stayed at Premier in the night before on the Houston Road. It was quiet, um, which surprised me because that Houston Road is a very busy road. 24 yeah. hours a day, there's cars going up and down there. Well, I didn't any, hear any cars. It's very well glazed. And um, at the end of it, they ask you, did you have a good night's sleep? I said, yes, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. You know, and they do a wonderful, I think it's a Premier Inn or the Travel Lodge. One of the two do a really big breakfast, yeah. according to my sister, which is very good value for money. I think £10 all you can eat. Uh I, I, I just just laugh because uh, it's probably just as well, but Callum's at work, so he won't be listening to this. But I remember we stayed in, um, can't remember what it was. It was one of those. I'm um, in Egham for a big family wedding. Very posh it was. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Where were you staying? Yeah. Uh, Egham. Yeah, where? Uh, um, what do you mean? Where? Uh, I, mean uh, uh, I think it was um, a, a Premier Inn or a Travel Lodge. But no, it's Travel Lodge. That's right. I remember now. Yeah. Funny enough, it, it was right over the top of a weight trace. Funny enough. Really? So that was Gosh. Good. And um, yeah, close to the town and whatever. It's only a taxi ride out to the way. The reason, reason why, the reason why it makes me laugh, you know, apart from a few issues of uh, getting in, because you've got these funny credit cards now, sort of thing. That oh, we just need to have the right oh, they get on my nerves. I can never work those cards. They just don't work no. for me. No, no, they did. They did with me. I had to have bought there. Of course, being a purpose-built place, it's it just like full of corridors, isn't it? You have to, you have to have a sat nav to make yourself. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, so we sorted all that out. But on the Saturday morning, we were a bit late leaving the room because we nipped out and got a bit of breakfast. Unfortunately, they didn't have a restaurant in the place, but we were right in the centre of Egham, so it's quite a nice little town, really. Right. So we managed to find somewhere to eat. So of course, we didn't have to be at this wedding until about one o'clock. So we come back. And we were all in the room, and Callum decided to have a bath, which for a teenage uh, nipper is quite a momentous act in itself, really. <laughs> and uh, the woman come in with a sort of light pass key to clean the room. And of course, bless her, she was Polish or Romanian or something. They have a quite uh, uh, very good, as you can tell, I haven't either grasp of the English language. But she said, oh, I'll clean it. I said, no, don't worry about it. I said, um, I said, just leave the stuff on the bed. I said, I really don't care. I said, we're, we're, we're getting them, you know, the way. But no, she would have, but she clean it. And with that... 
she started walking into the bathroom. So I shouted at her about three times, stop, and of course she did. <laughs> she, went, <laughs> she went into the bathroom, and Callum had had all the shower curtain round, even though it was a bath. Of course, she, <laughs> she whipped the curtain back, and there was Callum there. <laughs> <laughs> He's all, all, yeah. Poor woman, and he had a heart attack. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> come on, Callum's dad. You spoil all the fun. Oh. You should have cr- just closed the door quietly and left the room, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I should have done. Should I really? But, oh, how embarrassing. He, 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 I don't think Callum he would said, have complained. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> said it wasn't your fault because I told her to stop enough times. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was the one, apart from the beautiful wedding, of course, that's the one major memory of that weekend. <laughs> Did you but book? They, did you book that one in advance? Because they're a lot cheaper if you book in advance, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I did. It was very reasonable, actually. I forget what it was, but we sort of yeah. managed to get away, even though we're all my, as you know, Shannara and Callum are quite old now. We managed to get away with a family room, and it was less than uh, I think mean, it was less than a hundred quid. I think, or just over a right. hundred quid for was two it? nights, which for yeah, Egham was pretty good, really. So the lady who cuts cuts my hair, she's just been on holiday to Scotland. And uh, oh, okay. she stayed at, uh, I think it I think it was Travel Lodges. She said, um, but she left it a bit late. Therefore, they had to pay something like £120 a night. Whereas if it had been before, it would be a lot cheaper. I said, well, what, what would it have been? About 70 quid? She says, no, 30. £30 yeah, pound a night if you yeah. if you can book really far in advance. It's, now, it's the same with everything, though, because yes. as, as you know, I live on the old Italy widget. And um, Friday... Me and the kids went down to the Great Dorset Steam Fair. Callum's, what, nearly 18 now. And he's, um, he's been going every year since he was six weeks old. So it's a bit of a family pilgrimage. Oh, life, that's you know? great, yeah. And, and, of course, they, in the last two years, they've shifted it back a week. It always used to be Bank Holiday Monday, and then it always used to start on the Wednesday to the Sunday. But what they found was about every two or three years, the kids were going back to school in that week. And of course, it, it, it killed them. It totally decimated their tape because they're... Right their admission take from the Wednesday to the Friday was almost non-existent. So obviously all the kids were back at school. Yeah, they they made the decision now to move it from this week. So it starts on the Thursday of like the week we're in now. We go through the bank holiday Monday. But of course, the the difference I noticed is booking the ferry because of course it's bank holiday weekend and it's still classed as high summer. And the the ferry's back. Yeah, so that you know? you'll be clovered for the price there. I think yeah. Shania, and a, didn't and I a lot did... of people richly sort of like um, hate the ferry companies down to their nearest rivet. But I guess I don't know. At the end of the day, I guess they're um, they're a private company, aren't they? Red Funnel's just been bought out by a company that uh, looks after people's pensions, so they're obviously going to extract the most amount of right. money they can out of it as they can. So is is there no only is no there to is there railways, a, is it? Is there only one company that you yeah you can come over on? Is it like a monopoly? There's Red Funnel and White Link, but they're, they're, they're sort of two companies, so they, they sort of uh, if anything White Link's more expensive. Basically the same. Sort of, I've yeah. uh, I've joined up to this website called Wingly, W I N G L Y, and what it is is light aircraft pilots and people like me who joined the website. Now, some of these pilots, they have to get so many hours in the sky. for, for so, I don't know what, uh, what, what it all is. All right. They have to fly yeah. for so many hours. So they put a little advert on there, on their thing, saying, Fred Bloggs flying a Cessna, um, going to the Isle of Wight between the 4th and the 10th of... September, uh, sixty-five pounds one way has been flying for one hundred hours. Oh right. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can pick you up from, and it will say the airport. Now my local airport, I can, I, I've got either Blackbush or Fair Oaks. All right. And you just turn up. Uh, you let them know on the website. Yeah, I'd like to go to the Isle of Wight for a day, and you let them know. You meet them there, and they fly you over there. How fantastic right. is that? Have you, have you actually done it yet? Or? No, not yet. I'm a little bit no. concerned that these are amateur pilots, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, have, have you I, I don't... That thing? I haven't watched it. I've seen it trailed on the telly, but on my TV at the moment, about, um, oh, what, what's that Oh, what's that cheap plane company? It's on the tip of my tongue. It was orange. Um, um, Stilios used to own it. Oh, um, uh, easy, easy, easy jet, easy jet, right. yeah, easy jet. Yeah, evidently there's there's a um, showing you all the pilots, like the trainee pilots on there. 
Oh, all right. They're only about 19 or something, sort of like silly. Oh, you know, oh Christ, they're ever so young, yeah. Yeah, they're very young. Yeah, because yeah. I showed you that this guy taxing and he's, he's, <laughs> he's about to take off and he hit the brakes by mistake <laughs> and the whole plane sort of went... <laughs> oh, they're not very strong, those planes, at all. No, no, they're, no they're, 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 they're like... the ones you're talking about. We haven't flying over from Sandown Airport and Beverage Airport here, and then he looked like I... they're, they're held together with uh, like string. And I whatever. swear they're ma- they're made out of recycled um, uh, Coca Cola cans. I'm sure <laughs> they are. They're ever so thin those metals. And I'll tell you what, the other thing: Have you been in one of those little planes? I haven't. No. Ah, oh, I've been in a well, helicopter. I've been in a little helicopter before. Well, the the thing is, they're so small and light. When you're in a great big plane with, I don't know, 500 people or whatever there is in one of those planes, you get a bit of turbulence and, you know, generally it doesn't move that much. In the little planes, a bit of wind and, my God, doesn't your heart sink. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course the, great, the great problem with what you said about that website is, is where, where's your cut-off point for the amount of hours you'd fly over someone? Is it yeah. 50? Is it 100? Is it 150? I mean, I don't know, if it said 10 hours, I think I probably wouldn't do it on that. But on the other hand, you know, at 10 hours, they're going to be really careful, aren't they? Because yeah, you, you, you write a review afterwards, you know, Fred Bloggs, yeah, he was really nice, but my God, he needs to learn some more lessons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a way to go, eh? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Are you doing a show today? Yes, I am. Yes, I'm on from uh, 1 to 4 o'clock. A few things to to natter about as I as I do I've uh, I've done an interview actually when I went to the uh, Dorset Steam Fair I've done an interview with the top bloke Martin Oliver so I've got that to uh, play out he's a he's a top man because of course they've got their own radio station their Steam Fair FM but they wouldn't have me because they reckon I've talked too much can you believe that <laughs> oh I mean have you barely said a word since we've been on the phone what, oh, no, what, why no, are no, they Dan, all chicken. they're all obs- all these people that run radio stations now are obsessed with people not talking and playing as much music as possible. I can put a blooming CD on if I want to do that. Do, do, you, know? Do you know, Chris, I'm not being funny in saying that, but that that's exactly that's exactly what I think. I want to be why, entertained um, by the yeah. DJ. I want to be entertained. I want you to make me laugh. I want you to read out bits of news, and I want you to to to, to talk to me like a friend. Now I I've started listening. I think I told you to that classic FM, and yeah. um. The presenters, that they all sound the same. They've obviously yeah. been told to speak in this really cool voice. And there's this woman on there at night time. I can't remember her name. I heard her name the other day and I thought, oh, I must remember that. It's not Theresa May, is it? No, it's not Theresa May. Don't you be speaking about my <laughs> Theresa like that. Don't you be saying... Um, and in one link, she said the word gorgeous three times. Oh, that was such a gorgeous piece, don't you think? Yes, it's Algar and his first symphony, which is just such a wonderful piece. It always reminds me of sitting next to the seaside and watching. Coming up next, we have a gorgeous piece by Chopin. He really does write some relaxing music. Of you. And, it, and it's all like that. And for Christ's sake, she needs a bomb up her bum to get her going a little bit faster. Oh, but the voice is so... You, notice, you, you bear in mind that I've got a 70-year-old son with me. He's into all these sort of like presenters like, oh, what is it? Uh, like Dead Mouse, I think. You get him on, you get him on, seriously. That's what he's called. <laughs> you get him on Radio 1 and whatever. And Radio 1 I mean, is the other way around. They shout at you. Oh, you say, oh, that's, that's, oh it's and just and awful. Awful. And it's the same, they, they and it's talk. The same when we were going to the... Um, Steam Fair on Friday. They talk you radio at one you. On then, and this is like six o'clock in the morning. They're still doing that. Then they've got all this banging music, and they're still shouting at you. And you think, oh. They really are talking at you on there, not to you. But yeah. I understand what they're trying to do on their classic and smooth radio. Smooth radio is just the same. They're trying to give you a, a, like a, a, a relaxing voice, but it doesn't. It just annoys me. I know, it, it just annoys me, that voice. Voices. No, Tony Blackburn should be on all radio stations at all times, and that's it. And, of course, it's all voice tracked anyway, isn't it? There's not anyone in There's the no studio one there. talking to you there at 1 I, o'clock in the morning or I, 1 o'clock lunchtime, is it? It's, I don't, all, it's all been done a fortnight ago, isn't it? I don't think there's anyone there, no. I'm, I'm not 100% no. sure of that one, but... Uh, there we, we go. Could, we, we could do that with Vectis Radio if we wanted to, we, because every time you go to a presenter link, there's a voice track there if you want to put one well, in. What's the you know, point? 
Might as well not have anyone there at all. There's no point. Well, that's what I said. That's what I said to you before. If I have a Sunday off, I, I just say to the program controller, "Well, you'll have to find something to fill." I don't record the show because I don't see the point because it it's just flat. You know, it just doesn't sound the same. Isn't it? Ah, it's just boring. Anyway, I've got better do, things to do than sit here talking to you. I've got here, here, to just before you go, do you take phone yeah. calls on your show? Do you take? Do you open lines or what? I do sometimes. Oh, you uh, do? Okay. Don't go out of my way to. Um, sort of encourage it in a way, because from Mondays to Thursdays, we have a... Not, not that it matters, because there's, there's, there's radio stations that do nothing but talkings, isn't there? But that, that is our dedicated sort of um, talking hour, you know, so I tend to not tread on their toes. But I will do. I do get a few people who phone up, a few regulars, okay, um, cool. and put them on there. But uh, I guess uh, FM for us is very imminent now, literally within the next fortnight, I think. Not as happening so, soon, um, isn't it? Yeah, good, good, so excellent. I was, so I've said that to the programme control. It's a bit more of a sort of like worry because you've got no sort of like delay or anything, you know. So oh, you, why, think, uh, why is there no delay? You, you can, you should have a delay on there, shouldn't you? Yeah, well, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. And his answer to that was just sort of, um, you know, sort of um, not really encouraged sort of people is, to phone in. Yeah. There is a computer-based one. Now, I'm not swearing here. I think it's called Ars. <laughs> A R S E. <laughs> Hang on. E, let me have a look. Ask delay. Here we go. Ah, oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, Ask software turns any standard PC in one of the most sophisticated stereo broadcast profanity delays available today. I wonder how much it is. Somehow, I bet it's dear. And it, it it's I, I, I um I've seen this working. Pricing. Here we are. Pricing. Pricing. Oh dear. Uh, six hundred and ninety-five pounds. Oh, bloody! Yeah, let's sell a few more raffle tickets. <laughs> it's software. It's software. I'll put a link. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll put yeah, it's that. Worth, worth a look, because uh, as a, as you say, it's uh, it's sort of like um, yeah. I don't know. My, my the people obviously the regulars that I've got phoned in, you know, you you, you yeah. get to know sort of people, you know. But I think that might become an issue if we get to a much wider audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're yeah. on FM, you know. Well, go yeah. and have a look on my wall now. And you'll see, I've, I've put links up within the messages to the show today. I've put links yeah. up for um, Wingley, okay, the oh, flight right. police ball, and the uh, arse uh, delay system as well. All right? Sorry. Sorry, it's very childish. Every time you say arse, it makes me laugh. Oh, of course it would do, because you've got a sense of humour. <laughs> Cheers, then, Chris. Have a nice day. Thanks for calling in. Love to all on the Isle of Wight. Cheerio now. Lovely vectors on the Isle of Wight. Uh, Just about managed to get a few words in there myself. (laughs) Oh, dear. Aaron says, I imagine it was Rose Garden who stayed before you. What, with that bit of blooming... uh, 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 With with, with the old... um, uh, Oh, God, I can't remember what it was called now. Floss. Floss in the hotel room. Dirty people they are. Disgusting people. Shania's there. Good morning, Shania. Uh, hello to Barbara Leitz, who joins us this morning. Good morning, Barbara. Uh, Carmel's there, who says, I'm still in love with my hubby 26 years later, and I would say even more so now. Isn't that lovely, Carmel? You're so lucky. I think you're very lucky to have to have found your soulmate like that. You know, I, I am a, I am jealous of people who find their soulmates. I really am. I wish, I could, wish I'd have found mine. It's just the way it goes. Um, if you do, can I have the glitter ball? What, when I die? Uh, yes, OK. Yes. Yeah, you'll probably need to contact my sister. Look for my friends. Look for Sharon Butler. Take the date of this show, which is the 27th of August 2017, and you can tell her on this show, Chris said I could have his glitter ball when he dies. So just make a little note of that in your diary, Aaron. And you can have that when I go. Although, you know, knowing your lifestyle, I think you'll probably go first, my lovey. OK. <laughs> Good morning to Tony Power, who joins us this morning. Morning, Tony. Um, uh, Wayne is there as well. Good morning, Wayne. And the lovely Deirdre is there as well. Greetings, Deirdre. And lovely Elaine is there uh, in... Um, in Israel as well. Greetings to you. Just going back to this uh, story then about Bruce Forsyth. Um, it says, uh, his wife said, uh, we have a house full of flowers. The television has not stopped dedicating special programmes and calls of solidarity have not stopped. And it and it's lovely. In 2015, he had keyhole surgery after suffering two aneurysms. Is that something to do with the brain? Or can that be anywhere? 
Oh, I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, his health had deteriorated recently after he contracted bronchial pneumonia, which is, uh, yeah, I mean, when people get that, that's... Sometimes they can fix it and sometimes they can't, can they? Uh, but he went quietly. And it said he went quietly, surrounded by his family. And, you know, what more could you want, really, when, when you go? You know, you, you don't want a violent death or want to be murdered or killed in a car crash or plane exploding. You, you know, if if you can die there in a bed surrounded by... Your loved ones, I don't know if he was in the hospital or at home. And you just imagine being in your home and, you know, you've got children and that. I mean, what, what more could you want to go like that, really? I think he was very lucky to be able to go like that, really. So a little bit more on Bruce Forsyth. Uh, Lee said, didn't he do well? Bless him. He absolutely did, didn't he? He did wonderful, old Lee. Anyway, so this morning I've, uh, I've, uh, I've got a bit of knee trouble, actually. Just kind of... If you was if you was to put your hand on your knee like that, and then move it kind of round to the side, just slightly off the knee cap, just at the side there, there's a little bit where it goes in. Okay, there I keep getting a pain, and it's very very localized. It's only a tiny bit like that. It tends to occur when I kneel down, for example, at church, and when I'm on my bicycle. I've noticed it when I'm on my bicycle and I literally have to let my right leg do all the work because I can't push down on this. So I don't know what's going on there. It's been going on for about three or four weeks now. Um, and uh, I have to kneel down in a certain way as well. Anyone else? Do I need a new knee? Anyone doing knees this morning? Can I purchase it? Do they do those on eBay? Need a new knee or something like that. So, of course, I sat next to Vivian this morning and we had a little bit of a laugh. Vivian keeps telling me that I need to take B12 complex. She keeps looking at me. She says, uh, and she says, she, she said, I think it's because I'm losing the weight, you see, uh, down at the Slimmer's World. It's, we're on 19 and a half pounds so far. That's what I've lost so far. I'm hoping that this Tuesday I get down to my Slimming World 10 which means I will have lost 10% of my body weight. That's that's what I'm hoping for this week. I might not get, if it, if I don't if I don't get to it I won't be too worried about it, but I'm not going for 2 weeks of course. I'm going Tuesday. Got to got to pop into London Tuesday as well uh, down to the Royal Free and uh, uh, do some bloods and collect some pills from down there. Um but um uh, and then next week um of course uh, at my sister's I'm looking forward to going up there. I've got hired a little caravan at Willow Holt place and, and doing that there. Um, so, yes, I've got the weigh-in on Tuesday. And if I can get to my tent, so that means I lost 10% of my body weight. That's good, isn't it? It's not bad. It's not, not that hard. I'm feeling a bit peckish now, to be honest. I think I'm going to have to disappear soon. Anyway, so sitting next to Vivian, we had a little bit of a chat, as always. And at the end, I said, oh, Vivian. She said, oh, now Vivian likes everything done properly. And she said to me, oh, I've got to go now. I'm sorry, Chris. She said, I'll see you next week. I want to catch the reader because they made a mistake. Oh, yes, she likes it. All done properly, Vivian. She was a little bit upset with one of the readers this morning who must have mentioned a wrong word or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Time disappeared very quickly yesterday, I noticed. That's why we weren't here doing a show yesterday. I done my gardening and then I read my book. I'm reading a book at the moment about a boy who's been who's about to be given a pig's heart because his heart is failing. It's very good, and I've got to the bit in the book where it's um, where he's about to meet the pig, and he's met the pig, and now he feels guilty that the pig has to give up its life so that he can have the pig's heart. So I'm about about that that far in the book. It's very very good young adults book. I like young adults books. Very, very good indeed. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I was putting in the plants just to do doing my gardening. I managed to get 12 plants for 20 quid. Isn't that fantastic? A lot of the online plant people like uh, Baker's, B-A-K-K-E-R-S, or there's Sutton Seeds. Um, this is another one that I, 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 I um, buy from as well. I can't remember what the other one is now. But anyway, at end of season, they sell all the shrubs. That, the shrubs are the ones... Uh, the perennials that come back every year that's what you want to buy don't buy bedding plants you buy them they grow for six months then they die you've got to chuck them away buy perennials they come back up next year at the end of the season 
a lot of these perennials, they've already flowered. They're not going to flower again this year, but they sell them off dirt cheap. And I managed to get 12 plants in two litre pots, 20 quid. Now, usually those plants would be anything sort of between 12 and 20 pounds each plant. So there's a huge saving there. So I was putting those in the garden yesterday. I've had to move over to pots now. We got pots now. I've got no room left in the garden. Uh, seriously. No room left in the garden. There's a phone line if you want to call in quickly, because I'm going to finish in about uh, 10 minutes' time. So do join us if you want to. 02081443477 is my phone number, OK? Wayne says, I love the way you say bicycle. 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 And you say it. Bicycle. On my, I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my... Is that a song by Queen? I can't remember. I think Wolfgang's with us this morning. Good morning, Wolfgang. We're missing you at the karaoke. Are you coming back for a holiday this year? Are you over here at all? Wolfgang is a lovely chap. He lives in Ger He's German. He lives in Germany. And I met him at uh, the city of Quebec karaoke a, a number of years ago now, actually. And uh, he's been over, I think, once since. And he sings karaoke songs. Can't remember what he sings now. I think he does Sinatra stuff. Do you know, I closed my eyes then. I went all dizzy for a moment then. Oh, I hope I'm not going to collapse on air. Quickly, share my show to your walls. Quickly. You might get me collapsing if you're lucky. <laughs> Put the plants in. Um, read my book a bit. My um, hanging baskets, which, you, which I think you've seen at the front of my house. At the front of my house this year, I did hanging baskets with trailing begonias and I bought the little plants don't buy hanging baskets ready made well sometimes they rarely and I bought them in there when they were tiny and I put them in and I put a few fuchsias in there as well well they are so big now and literally the hanging basket is now kind of leaning forward where all these things are hanging down and the, the hanging begonias have actually started now to break off they're falling down where they're so heavy. They're so beautiful at the front. And the begonias, they seem to just stay there for ages. Very Now and again, a flower might drop off. But you, you don't seem to have to deadhead them. They, they're just there. Beautiful apricot colour. They're so nice. Tony says, I don't know if you remember a radio show that used to be on Sunday afternoons. Can't remember of the name of the show. But the DJ was an actor and a DJ. His name was Hart. And he used to present all his guests with a bottle of champagne and a bunch of roses. I used to hate the tone of his voice, so patronising and it was so fake. Can you remember the DJ's name? No, I can't. I wonder who that was. Hart. Was it Russell Harty? Was it Russell Harty? He was... He was, um... He was a talk show host in the 80s, I think... He died from a complication of AIDS, if I remember rightly. Russell Harty. He was on the telly. Was, was it him on the radio as well? Ah, it, it could well have been, Tony. I'm not quite sure. All right. Um, so last night, last night, you may have seen... Uh, we tried broadcasting a whole drag show with that new piece of software. Oh, it wasn't Russell Harty. No, it wasn't. OK. I don't know, Tony. Not sure who that was. OK. We did try broadcasting a whole drag show uh, from Central Station last night with the new software, and it kind of worked. It wasn't bad at all. We got cut off at one point. It, it just stopped. I don't know why that was. I always hate it when something happens and you don't know the reason for it. But we did. it did get cut off eventually. Um, so I, I just restarted it, but it it kind of worked. The sound was good. I thought the picture quality was all right. The only thing is, you know, it's, it's kind of fixed. It's not really possible for me to start moving the camera around and follow the artist around the venues. You get the whole stage in, but the moment she moves off the stage, you know, I can't really come around and, although I did once and start moving the blooming camera around or whatever it looks because I'm working the sound and lights as well. But it kind of worked uh, quite well. If you want to watch that, that is on my Facebook wall. Uh, it's not suitable for children. There's a lot of um, adult themed entertainment on that as well. OK, so just be warned at that. All righty. Now. Here's a question for you. I'm thinking of dropping the birthdays because we've been doing that for a couple of years ago. What do you think? Shall we drop the birthdays? Just let me know. Put a message on there. I'm thinking about dropping the birthdays. So I don't know what you think about that, OK? Now, uh, talking of which, I'm going to 
finish up now because it's dinner time. I haven't done my dinner yet. I think I've got uh, what I'm going to have. Oh, I might, I might have. Um, no, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got some more corn stew left over from in the fridge. I'm going to have that with some rice, which I'm looking forward to uh, this afternoon. So I'm going to do my dinner now. Oh, there's a message there. Just a moment. Let me read that. Uh, oh, okay. That's that's something else completely different. So I'll do the birthdays today, of course. But we're, I'm thinking of kind of dropping the birthdays. What do you think? Or should I just keep them going? I'd appreciate a message on there or something. See what you think, yes or no, OK? Happy birthday today to Peter Thompson is 30, uh, 63 years old today. 36, OK, Peter? Peter Thompson today is 36 years old today. Happy birthday, Peter. Graham L. Hall playing that guitar. Happy birthday to Graham. Uh, Stephen Geller. Happy birthday, Stephen. Hope you're doing your artistic stuff very well there, sir. Thomas Oliver Green is 32 years old today. Happy birthday, Thomas. Vinette Cowan. Oh, I haven't seen you for ages, Vinette. I hope you're well. She does Tina Turner uh, and other stuff. Uh, Vinette is a singer and she w used to work with me several times in the Black Cap and Harpo's in Earl's Court. That's going back about 28 years or more, I think, that one. So happy birthday, Vinette. I never forget people. All right, my darling. Funnily enough, I spoke to Sandra Edwards on the Facebook the other day as well. And uh, she's doing all right. So happy birthday, Vinette. And Carl Kennedy today is 35 years old today. Happy birthday, Carl. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthdays. It's a, you've got a lovely day for your birthdays. It's beautiful out there. Some of your last messages coming in there. Shania, Wayne, and Diane all say don't drop the birthdays. Keep them. OK, OK, I will then. We'll keep doing the birthdays in the same place right at the end of the show. I think that's all right doing them there. OK, I, it was just, I don't know why I thought that. I thought, oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, do people get fed up? Because, you know, people's birthdays have now come round two or three times, haven't they? Do you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> um, we, we, we've been doing that about two years. And I, I thought to myself, I wonder if people are kind of fed up with me plastering my show on their walls just to sort of sing them happy birthday but yes if you think that's it's a good thing to carry on doing that i'll do that all right that's it for the show this afternoon thank you very much for joining me uh, tonight it's our very long karaoke special at the camden eye that's in camden town just outside camden uh, tube station starting at eight o'clock at night and finishing at two in the morning I might have to purchase a sandwich halfway or a pizza or something to keep me going for that one. But that's uh, tonight. Get there nice and early. Starts at 8 o'clock, finishes at 2 tomorrow morning. Karaoke this Sunday today at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. Have a lovely Sunday and thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.